GMC Motorhome Orientation Part 1. This is the GMC Motorhome. It is important that you acquaint yourself with it, not only from the standpoint of operation, but most importantly, from the service point of view. The engine, rated at 265 SAE net horsepower, is a 455 Olds Toronado V8 engine, which has been modified to meet motorhome driving needs. Features include sodium-cooled valves, a 682 square inch radiator, a 21 quart cooling system, six quart oil capacity with filter, and a turbo hydromatic transmission. The GMC motorhome also has front wheel drive. The rear suspension uses air bellows with automatic height control valves to maintain a constant ride height. Components such as the engine and transmission should be fairly familiar. They make it a motor vehicle. However, you may not be experienced with the operation and servicing of other components, the components that make it a motor home, such as the refrigerator, plumbing, or stove. We're going to take a tour of the GMC motor home to see exactly what is there, where everything is, and how things operate. But before we do, it would be useful to examine the motor home's utility systems first. It's LP gas, water, electricity, and drainage. This drawing illustrates the water system layout of the 26-foot model. The motorhome's fresh water system has two sources of supply, the 40-gallon supply tank at the rear, or direct connection through a hose attachment to a city water system. The connection on the driver's side is where city water is hooked up. Because city water has a higher pressure, the water pump functions as a check valve that closes off the tank to the city system. The supply tank is not filled from the city water connection. Instead, the tank is filled through its own filler, which is located in the LP gas compartment on the passenger side. From the supply tank, copper lines run to the shower, toilet, wash bowl, and water heater, all in the bath module. Hot and cold water lines then run along the wall to the kitchen sink on the 23-foot model and up the wall, across the ceiling, and over to the sink on the 26-foot model. When not hooked up to city water, water pressure is provided by a 12-volt electric demand water pump. Here we see a schematic drawing of the 26-foot model's drainage system. Wastewater runs from the kitchen sink, wash bowl, and shower floor drain through plastic pipes to a 32-gallon holding tank. The tank is cradled within the vehicle frame just to the rear of the main fuel tank. All of these lines are vented through the roof, just as in a house. The toilet also flushes its waste into the holding tank through a gas-tight seal. The tank is drained by a dump valve at the rear. The LP gas system is always supplied by the LPG tank, that's liquid petroleum gas, never by an outside connection. Butane or propane may be used. The choice is usually regional, since butane will not vaporize in cold weather, while propane will vaporize down to 40 below. LPG is gas under sufficient pressure to turn it into a liquid. The 26-foot model's LPG system is depicted in this drawing. On demand, it is drawn from the tank through a regulator valve and depressurized into a combustible gas. The copper gas lines run outside of the vehicle, through the wheel well and under the floor, resulting in the least amount of gas line within the vehicle to reach specific appliances. If the motorhome has the optional gas electric refrigerator, one line goes to it. Other lines go to the stove and the furnace. Hot air from the furnace is distributed through up to 50 feet of ducting to thoroughly heat the interior. The motorhome living area has two wiring systems, a 12-volt direct current system that is basically the same as the automotive circuits, and a 120-volt alternating current system similar to your house wiring. Here you see the wiring schematic for the 26-foot model. The 12-volt system operates all lights, vent fans, the water pump, the furnace blower, the refrigerator, and the optional electric recirculating toilet. The 120-volt system powers the water heater, wall outlets, the optional roof air conditioner, and the built-in vacuum cleaner available on the 26-foot model. During travel, 
the motorhome's automotive 12-volt circuits are powered by the automotive battery and the engine's Delcatron generator. The 12-volt living area circuits are powered by the living area battery or the optional motor generator through the converter. The Delcatron generator automatically recharges both the automotive and living area batteries while traveling. At a campsite, the external electrical hookup or the motor generator through the converter recharges the living area battery. The converter is necessary because both the motor generator and the external electrical connection supply only 120 volt alternating current. The converter changes the 120 volt AC to 12 volt DC. It also functions as a 12 volt battery charger. When the motorhome is moving, the 120 volt circuits are powered by the motor generator or not at all. At a campsite, the external electrical hookup brings 120 volt AC power through circuit breakers to provide power for the 120 volt AC circuits and through the converter for the 12 volt DC circuits. The motor generator cannot provide power unless the external power cord is plugged into its receptacle. If the battery boost switch on the instrument panel is left in the bat normal position, the living area circuits will not drain the automotive battery. With the switch in the bat boost position, the batteries can be used together, either to start the vehicle or run the living area circuits. After using the bat boost position, it is recommended that the switch be returned to the bat normal position. As we take our tour, we'll see how to operate the motorhome's components. After a demonstration of how something works, a small stop sign, like this, may appear on the screen. If you wish, you can stop your projector and perform the operation you just saw. This way, you'll be able to look at components that have been pointed out or practice a procedure while the instructions are fresh in your mind. To stop the projector, just press down on the stop lever. Then, press the start lever when you want to start the film strip again. Let's walk to the front now and start our tour there. To open the engine access doors, turn each latch knob to the left. From the passenger side, you can check or fill the batteries and engine oil fill, the radiator, engine coolant reservoir, and the air conditioner receiver dehydrator sight glass. The Delco Eye makes checking the battery level easier. However, a handheld mirror is required for a visual cap-off check of the rear battery. For battery removal, you must remove the front battery before the rear one. On the driver's side are the windshield washer reservoir, the brake master cylinder, the engine oil dipstick, and the air compressor. Behind the passenger's side engine access door is the permanent GVW plate, indicating the gross vehicle weight and the maximum front and rear end weights for the individual motorhome. It is important that the motorhome owner adhere to these weights, for the GMC motorhome new vehicle warranty does not apply to any part of the vehicle which has been subject to misuse. Any part that fails because of overloading has been subject to misuse within the meaning of the provision in the warranty. After you close the doors, secure them by turning the latch knobs to the right to prevent their opening when the vehicle is in motion. The variable speed windshield wipers are powered by the power steering pump. The washer spray tips are attached to each wiper arm. Both the front and rear of the motorhome have energy absorbing bumpers, similar to the ones on automobiles. As you move around to the driver's side, you'll see the gasoline fuel filler compartment below the driver's window. There is one filler for both the main and auxiliary tanks. It's located here instead of more to the rear to prevent putting gasoline in the water fill by mistake. There is an important safety precaution to remember. All pilots should be turned off before filling the gasoline tanks. Unleaded or low lead fuel of approximately 91 research octane number or higher should be used to fill the two tanks. Each tank has approximately a 25 gallon capacity. There is a connecting pipe between the tanks. There is a fuel switching device on the instrument panel. When the tanks are filled, the switch should be put on main and left there. 
With the switch on main, fuel will be drawn from both tanks because of the connecting pipe. With the switch in this position, it is possible to use 41 to 42 gallons of the total 50 gallon fuel supply. When the main tank has less than five gallons left, the optional low fuel warning light is designed to come on. When the main tank goes empty, the switch position can be changed to fuel auxiliary. At this point, the auxiliary tank will contain seven to nine gallons of fuel. Because of the connecting pipe, it will not contain 25 gallons. Since the motor generator draws fuel from the main tank only, it cannot use the auxiliary tank fuel. Now, stand back a little so that you can see a full side view. Notice the tandem rear wheels, a distinguishing feature on the GMC motor home. They are mounted to the frame through mounting brackets and are suspended by air bellows instead of conventional leaf springs. The braking system utilizes two discs at the front of the vehicle and four drums at the rear. The motorhome is equipped with a dual hydraulic split system with power assist. The door above the rear wheels on the driver's side is the external utilities door. Inside are the connections for external electricity and water and the motor generator receptacle. To connect the motorhome's electrical system to an outside source, remove the cord from the compartment and plug it into a suitable power receptacle. All internal switching will take place automatically. The power cord meets RVI and other standards for an external power supply on a vehicle with the motorhome's wiring capacity. After the cord is disconnected from an outside source, it should be plugged into the motor generator receptacle to protect the plug prongs. It must also be plugged in before the motor generator can supply power to the motor home. If the motor home is not equipped with a motor generator, the cord should be neatly coiled in the external utilities compartment. Connecting the motor home to an external water source is easy. Remove the plastic cap, attach a garden hose, then Connect the hose to the outside water source and turn on the water. After disconnecting the system, the plastic cap should be reinstalled. The compartment at the lower rear houses the motor generator if the motor home is equipped with one. Otherwise, it's a storage area. The motor generator is what permits appliances requiring 120 volts to be operated without external power. It allows the motor home to be electrically self-contained. The Onan motor generator is mounted on slides so that it can be pulled out like a drawer for service. To slide it out, depress the buttons on the two latches, push up on the safety latch in the upper right-hand corner, and then pull it out. The Kohler motor generator is mounted on bar stock, and so three bolts must be removed before the unit can be pulled out for service. As just mentioned, the external power cord should be plugged into the motor generator receptacle before the motor generator is operated. Also, the motor generator should not be started unless the crankcase is filled with oil to the F mark on the dipstick. The remote switch to start the motor generator is inside the motorhome, above the refrigerator on the 23-foot model, and at eye level on the side of the refrigerator on the 26-foot model. A start-stop switch is also located on the motor generator itself. It is essential that whenever the motor generator is operating, the left rear window of the vehicle be kept closed to prevent the possible entry of motor generator exhaust gases into the vehicle. At the rear of the motor home is the valve for emptying the holding tank. Before you start to empty the tank, be sure that the holding tank valve just behind the left rear tandem tire is closed, otherwise the contents could spill on your hands. Then, remove the dump hose extension, which is retained to a bracket near the left energy absorbing piston, by rotating the hose adapter counterclockwise from the bracket. Pull out the dump hose from the bracket mounted to the center of the rear cross member and remove the dust cap. And connect the dump hose and dump hose extension by rotating the adapter clockwise. After you put the hose into a sanitary dumping station opening, check to see that there are no sags in the hose which would prevent complete dumping. 
To actually drain the holding tank, release the two snap retainers at the control valve and pull the handle straight out. The valve will open and the tank will empty. Procedures for draining the holding tank will vary slightly on vehicles built for sale in the state of California. To thoroughly rinse out the tank, close the control valve and add several gallons of water to the tank through the toilet. Then pull the handle to rinse the tank. Before you disconnect the hoses, be sure that the control valve handle is pushed in as far as it will go and that the snap retainers are relatched. Then reposition the extension hose and dump hose and don't forget to replace the dust cap. As you walk around to the next side, you'll see the LP gas door at the right rear corner. This compartment contains the fresh water fill cap and the LP gas controls. To fill the 40 gallon water tank, remove the locking cap and insert a hose connected to a pressurized water system into the water fill neck. After the tank is filled and the outside filler cap replaced, the GMC motorhome will have its own self-contained water system. Beside the water cap are the connections for filling the liquid petroleum gas tank. As we mentioned before, LP gas is used to operate the kitchen stove, the furnace, and the gas electric refrigerator if the motorhome is equipped with one. This is the filling connection. You do not remove the tank to fill it. Instead, the LPG dealer storage tank hose will have a POL adapter on it. The POL adapter is what will be inserted into the motorhome LPG filling connection. When liquid appears at the 20% valve next to the filler connection, as you can see here, the tank is full. This valve is designed to prevent the tank from being overfilled. The next valve, the control valve, is what turns on or shuts off the LPG for the entire vehicle. On the line leading out of the control valve is the pressure regulator. When the appliances are not being used, such as when the vehicle is being serviced, the control valve should be shut off to prevent moisture from condensing inside the tank and to avoid leakage of LP gas. Having a small amount of methyl alcohol put in the tank when it is filled will help prevent moisture in the tank and lines from freezing in the winter. Because of the flammability characteristics of liquid petroleum gas, there are a few precautionary measures which should be practiced. First, before the LPG tank control valve is opened, the controls for all gas appliances should be checked to make sure they are in the off position. If they aren't, gas could accumulate inside the motorhome, creating a fire or explosion hazard. Second, the owner of the motorhome must not alter the LPG tank in any way. The regulator on the tank is preset, and so no one but an authorized service technician should adjust it. And finally, to help reduce the hazards of leaking gas, it is recommended practice to turn off the LPG system when the motorhome is underway. All pilots and burners and the LPG tank should be turned off. This should also be done when the vehicle is not in use. Now, let's go inside. As you go in, notice that the door locks and unlocks from the outside in the normal manner by inserting the key into the lock and turning it. Type 1 door lock operates on the inside by pushing the lock button in. Type 2 lock operates by pushing the lock knob to the rear to lock the door and then to the front to unlock it. It also has a dead bolt lock for use as a second lock. We'll look at the driver's compartment first. Before you step up, look for the engine cover, which is completely flush with the driving compartment floor. It provides additional access to the engine. To remove the cover, loosen the bolts at the two rear corners by hand or with a screwdriver and lift it using the wire loops. As you can see, many engine components can be reached from here, including the PCV valve and PCV filter, the carburetor and attaching bolts, the generator and all drive belts, the automatic transmission fluid dipstick and fill tube, the distributor and coil, the spark plugs, and the air cleaner element. 
When you replace the cover, it is essential that it be fully seated to its seal. Make sure that the lip at the forward edge and the securing bolts are tight. Also, do not allow cables, carpeting, or any other material to break the seal between the cover and engine compartment. If the engine cover is not correctly installed and seated, engine exhaust could leak into the passenger compartment, creating a safety hazard. The driver and single passenger seats can be adjusted forward or backward to suit an individual's comfort. Just release the seat locking lever on the left side of the seat and exert slight body pressure in the direction you want to move. These seats also swivel. Release the locking mechanism by moving the seat swivel lever and turning the seat. The dual passenger seat on the 26-foot model does not swivel. Remember, though, to make sure that all swiveling seats are locked in forward position before the vehicle is driven. Another thing that is related to the seats are the seat belts. Before delivery and periodically, the belts should be checked for damage, such as cuts or fraying. Also, check to make sure that the anchor mounting bolts are tight. The instrument panel and driving controls on the GMC motorhome are essentially similar to those in an automobile or light-duty truck, such as the speedometer and odometer, fuel gauge and windshield wiper and washer. What may be new, though, are the auxiliary fuel, the battery boost, and the optional power level controls. We've already explained how the auxiliary fuel tank switch operates. Just remember that when the main tank becomes empty, there will be about seven to nine gallons in the auxiliary tank at that point, not 25 gallons. We've also previously mentioned that the motor home has a dual battery system, with one battery supplying power to the chassis and engine circuits, and the other supplying the 12 volt power to the living area. When additional power is needed for either one of the battery circuits, this switch should be put in the bat boost position. Otherwise, the switch should be in the bat normal position. After the booster is used, the switch should be put back into bat normal. The power level controls at the right of the steering wheel permit the motorhome to be leveled when it is parked on unlevel ground. There is sufficient air in the air reserve tank to raise the vehicle when parked without activating the compressor. The two knobs each have four positions. To raise either side of the motorhome up to a maximum of four inches above normal ride height, turn the appropriate knob to raise. To lower either side a maximum of four inches below normal ride height, turn the appropriate knob to lower. In order to maintain a desired height, when raising or lowering the vehicle, turn the knob to hold once the desired height has been reached. The motorhome will then remain at that level. When the controls are in the hold position, the automatic height control is locked out and there is no load compensation adjustment. Therefore, when you are traveling, the power level controls should be in the travel position, which will automatically maintain an approximate 8-inch ground clearance at the rear. As a reminder to turn to the travel position, a light in the dash panel is designed to light momentarily any time the engine is running and the transmission is in a drive range. If the motorhome is being driven on unimproved roads or over off-road conditions, maximum ground clearance can be obtained by placing both the right and left power level controls in the raised position until maximum height is achieved. Then, move the knobs to the hold position. Under this situation, it is recommended that a speed of 15 miles per hour not be exceeded since the air suspension has maximum pressure applied to it. If a total loss of air should ever occur, the vehicle should be driven slowly at 5 to 15 miles per hour depending on the road surface. The motorhome might be equipped with the optional Thermosan waste destruction system. When turned on, the system uses the heat energy from the engine's exhaust system to disintegrate holding tank wastes into harmless, invisible emissions that meet public health and federal emission standards. It just about eliminates stops to empty the holding tank. Since the thermosan system depends upon the engine exhaust system, it will not operate unless the motorhome is traveling a minimum of 35 miles per hour, preferably higher 
and the exhaust temperature must be at least 900 to 1,000 degrees. If the exhaust temperature or vehicle speed drops below its limit, the operation of the system will be temporarily interrupted. To operate, turn the on-off switch to on. A rheostat control lets you dim the indicator lights for night driving. When in the on position, the green ready light will automatically come on, indicating that the system is operational. The red reaction light will indicate that waste is actually being destroyed. When the white empty indicator lights, the system has destroyed all waste available and the system should be turned off. When the on-off switch is pulled out, the ready and reaction lights will flash if the pump is injecting waste. Even with the Thermosan system, the holding tank should be drained in the normal manner at least annually. This is necessary to remove any foreign particles or other insoluble matter that the Thermosan system cannot destroy. One important caution about the thermosand system, highly combustible materials such as kerosene, alcohol, or gasoline should not be put in the holding tank since they could create an explosion hazard in the vehicle exhaust. Also, the motorhome should not be winterized by putting fuel oil or kerosene into the sink traps since it will eventually drain into the holding tank. You should recognize all of the floor controls the parking brake, brake pedal, and the accelerator pedal. The brakes are self-adjusting. They are designed to eliminate periodic adjustment. To adjust the rear drum brakes, apply the brakes as the motorhome moves backwards. The front disc brakes adjust automatically with each brake application. Another plus factor about the front disc brakes is that they have a built-in wear indicator. It is designed to make a warning noise when the pads are worn to where replacement is required. The parking brake, however, is not self-adjusting. Instead, the brake cable can be tightened by rotating the knob at the top of the handle clockwise. There is one more thing to cover before we leave the driving compartment. To prevent dangerous exhaust gases from entering the motorhome, the two rear windows and roof vents should be kept closed when the vehicle is being driven. This is a precaution of which everyone riding in the motorhome should be made aware. Let's move back now and check out the living area. Besides the obvious functions of seating space and dining area, the Davo and dinette also provide part of the GMC motorhome sleeping area. Both the double and single dinettes convert into beds in the same manner. Raise the aisle end of the table a little and fold the leg under all the way. Continue raising the table end until it disengages from the wall. Then you'll be able to lower it until it rests on the recesses on the front of each dinette seat. With the cushions arranged, it will be all set for sleeping. The Davo converts into bunks just as easily. Simply swing the back support out from the wall, unfold the additional section to bring the back to its full width, and hook the two support straps into the eyes in the ceiling. Then the bunks will be ready for use. The area under one of the dinette seats is where the jack for the motorhome is stowed. The space under the other living area seats can be used for storing bedding or anything else. Notice the light switch panel beside the door. These switches operate the porch and courtesy lights and the optional aisle lights. If you're in the 26-foot motorhome and it's equipped with the optional monitor panel, it will be located above and to the right of the light switches. In the 23-foot motorhome, the monitor panel, if so equipped, is located above the refrigerator next to the motor generator switch. The series of four gauges, which indicate the LP gas, water tank, holding tank, and battery voltage levels, are activated by a rocker switch. The indicator light glows when the gauges are operating. GMC Motorhome Orientation continues on program MH2.